What's up? This is Chapstick from Family Force 5, and you are watching The Sound of War. When I was a kid, I watched Back to the Future with my buddy Elliot, and we were sitting there, and Michael J. Fox cranks up the amps and blows up the house. I was just like, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. It made me just feel like, I got to do this. As you'll notice, there's, there's two of a lot of things. I usually try to have a backup because on this tour, you never know when some kid's wearing a Ninja Turtle costume and he may be dancing on stage and somebody dressed up as a chicken kicks my pedals over and uh, spills water all over him. If that happens, we just like to be prepared. I love strings. I use the skinny top heavy bottom. Uh, so, you know, 10 to 52 on these bad boys when I'm playing in drop D or, or standard tuning. We play some songs in drop C and uh, on those I'll use the uh, beefy slinky, which I think are 11 to 54. I've tried experimenting a lot of different sizes, different brands, and uh, I'm really thankful for Ernie Ball. This is a 52 reissue Telecaster. Man, I wish I could take credit for it. It's actually Fatty's, our bass players. Uh, this is a, a Paul Reed Smith. It's an SC250, but it's got some things changed in it. The pickup covers, and uh, I swapped those out. Uh, the pickups themselves, got some different hardware. But I don't know if you can see how beat up it is, but it's, it's been on the road quite a, quite a while. And then it comes into the pedal board. Starts with my wah pedal, Dunlop 535Q. I just swapped that out from my 95Q. I really like it. It's got a lot of flexibility. Is there's a little uh, button on the side, which is kind of a built-in, a tube screamer kind of thing. I go into a Mojo Hand uh, Rook, which is an overdrive that's great. Into my bass synthesizer pedal, very much a signature part of Family Force 5 sound. It's dirty, it's weird, it's futuristic, and, uh, and kind of 80s too. Going from there into my Digitech Whammy pedal, I have the WH-1. I could play a show without it, but it would probably be the hardest one to go without. It's it's a gem. I also have another overdrive. It's the ZW44. It goes to a Wampler fuzz pedal, Leviathan. We use it all over a lot of our recordings. Zombie, uh, Cray Button. Uh, it's a very Family Force 5 sound. Uh, I also have a Dew Drop by another Mojo Hand Effects pedal here. It's a reverb pedal. I go into a tuner, a uh, Boss TU2, normal, traditional tuner. From there, I normally go, that's why I have all these extra cables, um, it normally goes to the head, and so we don't go to the delay yet. So it goes to a 5150, and this is a classic original 5150. And from here, we'll go into a Palmer, which is a, a load box or a speaker simulator. So they get a dry signal that goes to the front of house that way. And then it comes out of there and goes into my delay pedal, which is an eventide time factor. Um, the coolest thing about this time factor is it can take line level or instrument level. I go there and I'll split the signal left and right. So we come out with two instrument cables that go into a DI. What we're trying to do is take one head and get three signals from it. So we can use the Haas effect and do like a, you know, a seven to 11 millisecond input delay on one side. And even sometimes we'll pitch one side up like a scent and one side down a scent. You got three signals, one's left, one's right, one's center. And it can sound huge that way. Aside from that, I do have a noise gate in the back. I put it through my effects loop, and I don't normally have a cabinet, but today we do for the sake of being backstage. So that's, that's really how the rig works.